Well, I think there's some concepts here that, that are certainly new to me. I mean, I'm not a console game developer. Um, so there's some new concepts there to pick up and some, I don't know, some interesting distinctions between key events and access events. Um, so definitely yeah, go the, the check big thing out. about access events is they are analog events. Now, we have not, if, you're, if you've done purely um, mobile development, then you will not be very familiar with uh, analog input events. Well, actually, that's not true. Now with the new 3D touch, people have to start thinking about analog or degrees of onness, in a sense, right? But um, analog events are always kind of hard to get your, your head around at first, but then once you get the concept, it's, uh, it's quite easy and natural. I mean, it's kind of weird because as game players, I'm sure many of us come from the, we've been playing games with the controllers all our lives. But then suddenly we're faced with having to develop for a controller, and we're like, wait a minute, this is weird. I'm getting one event at a time. That's not what I need. Or what does this mean, minus one or plus one? You know, it's like, I don't know. Well, you know, you certainly never, as a, as a player, you don't think about the controller being noisy. Yeah, right. And that's another thing. You don't think about how noisy the controllers are. That's the thing that has always frustrated me about joysticks, is they are inaccurate, they're not always centered, and then they're pseudo-noisy. They create a lot of events. And another thing they do is, um, I forgot to mention this, is, well, I, I did say it. Remember how I said that the, the values are between minus 1 and 1? That's not true. If you think about it, the way these things work is it's uh, a little piece of hardware that detects the relative position of the joystick. So if it's not perfectly centered or, um, what's the term I'm looking for here? Um, it's when you examine the value in, in advance and decide that that's zero. Um, okay, reference point. Me later. But the point is, is without knowing what the zero value is, it could actually go beyond one. So, for example, moving it over here could be 1.2. Well, we only care about up to one, really. So you kind of have to trim those values off. You have to do a little massaging of the data to get your joystick properly aligned and centered so you can decide what those inputs really mean. Is that making sense? So for example, imagine if you will that the x-axis on a joystick that you're using for testing is between minus 0.8 and 1.2. Well you would need to really normalize that value so that it's treated as minus 1 to 1. Otherwise you're going to have inaccurate motion based on that strange input that you're getting from that particular device. And then you get that all worked out, but if your code isn't, isn't um, if your code is not robust, somebody else could have a controller where it's minus 1.2 to 0 0.8. That's the range it takes for X. Now I'm, I'm giving you extreme values. It's usually much closer to 1 than that, but it's completely possible that somebody has a controller, an, ex an axis controller, that isn't centered. It doesn't produce minus one to one values, and so you've got to handle that in your game. That said, uh, we talked about this for now about an hour today, and we give a really just like a crash course. When we get to when we go to the uh, twin sticks, you're going to get to see a piece of code that's a lot more robust in terms of handling um, uh, joystick inputs, and we'll solve this problem of normalizing the values. So okay. I didn't want to do that for this one because it would overcomplicate the discussion. Okay, no, this was, yeah, this was a high level. This was get us some controller support. Um, and like you said at the beginning, it's not even something that we would ship. It's just something for uh, educational purposes and something to kind of... It's because somebody uh, on the show, somebody who's being quiet on the panel told me that I should use a joystick. Actually, I think <laughs> I probably should do it in advance of that. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some housekeeping items. So yeah. we are, this is the 21st. Uh, the 28th is next Monday. And then after that is the 4th, which will be January 4th, 2016. So I think uh, we have we have uh, the twin stick shooter topic that we wanted to start next week. And then the following week, the 4th, uh, I will not be available. We will actually be at a perk event 
company event in Las Vegas. So I, we won't have a show on that day. So, but but once we pick up after that, we'll have we'll have a show uh, as regular after that. So one of the, just as for the general audience, anybody who's watching and listening, uh, one of the things that we want to do in the new year is we want to break up these discussions into smaller segments. So we've previously we've we've had you know an hour um, hangout, and that hour has either been you know maybe half the time's been an interview or half the time's been code or it's been one big long uh, conversation. So what we want to do is we want to break it down into smaller segments, maybe like 20 minute segments. Uh, we'll still get together on those Mondays, but we'll try to break these into pieces. So if you're here watching, watching live, then what you'll see is everything happening sort of real time, but then we will have structured everything so that we can chop the stuff up into little 20 minute segments. And that way you'll get um, you know, one, we'll be covering something like, let, let's say like uh, the controllers, but we might be covering, you know, three different aspects of it, right? And and they'll all tie together, but um, uh, to, to complete the entire topic, but there'll be individual segments. I don't know if that makes sense. We're, we're basically trying to make it to where we have, uh, you don't have to watch an hour's worth of Hangout in order to get what's going on. You can watch a 20-minute segment uh, and get some value out of it like that. That, does that make sense, Ed? I know you and I have it talked about this already, sense. but I just, wanted to... Uh, I just wanted to say the business with making things uh, shorter is uh, not mm -hmm. only will it help us keep uh, uh, items sort of like uh, tractable for people to listen to and pick up and do a, just a quick dive in, but the other thing is it'll let me, it'll force me properly to uh, do these segments in a way where I can completely cover the topic. So saying that we can only talk about something 30 minutes or 20 minutes, then I won't say, okay, I got to talk about joysticks and I got to connect that over here to the code. And like we did today where I try to like connect it all together, it gets a little confusing. But if I can focus on, for example, uh, here's how the one portion of this piece of code works standing alone. Yeah, today's, today's conversation could have been here's here, you know, we'll cover access, key events, and something else, right? And, yeah, and we'll just cover access one, key one, events and examining each portion of the access key event. And that's good enough. And one, yeah, and one, one video, one 20-minute segment could have just been just been on access. Right, and then, then another day could have been, okay, now that we know how the basic access works, let's make it useful. Whereas today, I was like, right. here's an access, let's make it useful, let's hook it up. And so that's the kind of thing we're trying to solve by changing our uh, format here. I mean, I, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, that being said, next week, do we want to? Um, what do we want to do is when we, in terms of twin stick shooter? So what I'd uh, like want to, to cover the is yeah, bring the twin stick shooter to you guys, show it to you, and then tell you this is the list of things that we'll be covering in the future. These are the parts that we so, care about. So sort of the overview, really sort of get, getting started part. video. I'm sorry, say again. More of the overview, sort of here's the concept we'll cover sort of thing, more yeah, of an intro Yeah, so to. this is the, uh, just start start off the discussion with no technical bits next week. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that'll be a good, a good place to start. Okay. You can see on my screen here, I just wanted to show you that this is a future piece of code that we are going to be talking about for uh, joysticks or for game pads. And this game pad controller here is detecting currently that I have two game pads hooked up to the system, and you can see them operating independently. And we're going to go through this as a completely separate uh, discussion where we just focus on the controller. So I have already for the, um, for the show a standalone example that will let us focus entirely on these concepts, and then we'll put it into the game. Excellent. So. All right. Well, that's all then that we have for today. Let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up and, and invite everybody to go over to youtube.com slash coronageek. Like I said before, we will link to the playlist in the show notes. Uh, you can download all the code. There's The playlist is going to have, uh, at this point, 11 videos that you can go back through and watch. Uh, everything's been broken down, and you can download the game and run it on your device and uh, have a good old time with it. So... So there you go. Uh, we'll be back here next Monday to talk about twin stick shooters. Until then, have a great week and happy coding. Cheers.